Hello Year 7, welcome to your first week of your new term. We are in term 6, the last term of Year 7. Not how we thought we'd be spending it, but I hope you're all ready to go on a new exciting learning journey at home. So, this is a little bit new. These were something we didn't do last half term. So I just want to, before we start with what topic we're doing, introduce you to how this is going to work. So each week we will upload the grid like we did last half term, but we will also be uploading one of these lovely voiceover, or in this case video, presentations. So the way it will work, the presentation will introduce the topic for that week, which will fit into our overarching topic. It will talk you a little bit through the tasks you have to do give you a bit of background information and then there may be some things to do along the way so I may ask you to pause the presentation in which case you might need a paper and a pen I suggest you maybe pause and get one now ready okay so the presentation itself is going to run through all you have to do with press play it should be as a video form for you and I am going to go straight into our new topic so excitingly Term six, we are looking at development. Now, some of you might already know a little bit about development, but don't worry if you don't, we're gonna find out all about it this half term. Uh, week one topic is going to be, what is development and what does it look like? So this week we'll be answering the question, what is development? And we're gonna think about what that looks like around the world. Okay, so straight into development. On the screen is a picture. This picture is one city, but as you can see, it looks quite different. What I would like you to do is, in a minute, pause this presentation and write down how you think this photo links to development and anything you already know about development. So to give you a little clue, you can see there are lots of buildings. Why are they different? How are they different? If you had to pick a half of that picture to live in, where would you want to live and why? Okay, so take a minute now, pause the presentation and write down your ideas. Okay, lovely. Hopefully we have lots of excellent ideas written down. Feel free to, in a different coloured pen, add anything you think about as we're going along, as I'm talking to you about development. And you are more than welcome to send this lovely piece of work I'm sure you've done to your teacher. However, this isn't one of our tasks for the week. This is just a little something we're thinking about as we introduce ourselves to the topic of development. So we'll go through this picture a little bit. As you can see, there are sort of two halves of the picture. There are lots of low rise, higgledy piggledy buildings on one side. They're not really in straight lines like streets. You can't see any gardens. They're all different sizes, shapes made of different material. And then on the other side in the background, you can see some lovely high rises. They have balconies with pools on, which in this weather sounds lovely compared to the other half that won't even have gardens nowhere for their cars. So within one city, and this city happens to be in Brazil, you can see there are different levels of development. And we know that because buildings can tell us about development, the amount of money an area has can tell us about development. And the way we see that money is through things like a pool or your car, your income, so how much money you earn in your job, lets you buy a nicer house or maybe you have to live in one of these smaller houses okay so we're thinking about what we already know about development and linking it to what we know about the world the amount of money we have is linked to development however that's not going to be the same for a whole country it's going to be as we can see here different within countries and then different between countries and what we're going to think about particularly this week is just what it looks like for each country now we need to think about what is development. Now, if you were to type in development into Google, you would get lots and lots of different definitions. So I want you, if you're completing task one, which asks you to define development, to think a little more specifically about geographical development. And some of the ways we can do that are by focusing in what the factors of development are. So we can think about social development, that's anything to do with people, think about environmental development so the environment around us nature 
buildings and then we can think about economic development so the monetary side of it a little bit like we were discussing in that last picture the money is one way to measure development but it's not the only way so one definition of development we could use is that everybody lives at an acceptable standard of living and quality of life but we don't know what acceptable is to everybody we don't know that everybody has the same definition of acceptable we also need to understand what we mean by standard of living and quality of life now these are development measures and we will be looking at these in more detail next week so i don't want you to worry too much this week about what they mean but they might be some of the words you need to define if you complete task one so task one you have five words to define and then because there are so many different definitions of development I want you to try and come up with your own definition from your research okay moving on to task two three and four we are going to be doing a bit of traveling the world from our living room to see what development looks like in different places the way we're going to do that is an excellent website called dollar street so dollar street is linked on your grid your Click on the link and it should take you to this page here. And Dollar Street is a visual representation of families and items around the world. And it lets us see what different people look like and what different levels of development look like in different places. So what will pop up is this screen here. You will see lots of different families and they range from the poorest families in the world to the richest families in the world. And you can see here Burundi, 29 dollars a month so their income what they earn is 29 dollars a month and china is 10,000 over there now i want you to remember that within a country there will be differences too but what the first task is asking you to do is just pick two families from around the world who are at different points on the income line and compare them task three will ask you to look at families within a country but we'll come on to that now, once you are on this page, you can click on a family and you can find out a little bit more about them. So this here is Kisha Singh. He lives in India and this is his family. They live all together. So all the people in that picture are one family. And if we want to find out a little bit more about them, we can click this button here. Visit this family. And that should bring us on to this here. So here we have some information about Mr. Singh and his family. They are 10 people living in a three bedroom house. Now to us, I'm sure that sounds a lot, but if we look at where his house is on the income line, he's actually not one of the poorest people in the world. He sits in the middle, if anything, towards the slightly higher end. And this is the area where most people in the world sit. Most people fit into that box there in terms of their monthly income and so when you're looking at your poorest your richest i want you to think about the people in the middle as well because they are more likely to be representative of most of the world and then when you're answering your tasks whether it's two three or four i want you to use the information in this box to help you because there's lots of really interesting things in there so it says here they sometimes go on vacation the furthest place, though, that they've ever been is within their own country. OK, so I want you to have a little bit of a read when you're thinking about task two, three or four. Then moving on to task three. Task three asks you once again to compare families along the income line, but this time you're doing it by country. So you need to click on this drop down menu here and it will bring up for you all of the countries that are available now. If the country is a darker colour like this, you can click on it. If it is greyed out like these ones, those aren't available to research. I want you to pick a country either that you want to go to, you want to find out a bit more about, or just that piques your interest, one maybe you've never heard of. And I want you to have a look at three families in that country who are all on different points of the income line and investigate them following the instructions on the grid. Finally, task four. Now, task four is asking us to change our topic. So instead of looking at 
all of the families, which is up here, we're going to click on it and we're going to pick a different topic. You could look at TVs by income. So what kind of TV a person has based on their income. You could look at armchairs. You can look at some of these popular ones, beds, floors, hands, and you're going to link that to development. So why does looking at people's hands or looking at people's beds tell us about development? And that's something you're going to have to think a little more deeply about. OK, those are just the three tasks that involve Dollar Street and then obviously your definition task. The grids work the same, but I'm just going to talk you through them now. And I want us just to have a little reminder of the grid just to go over it again so that we're all super clear on how it works. So just like last half term, you will be sent a grid. It will be set on a Monday. It will be due on a Friday. So you should be watching this hello, on a Monday and then you will send the work to your teacher on a Friday. No need to send it to me. I'm just the person explaining it to you this week unless I am your teacher. So 7A, you're sending it to me. 7-1, you need to send your work to Mrs. Cook, just like you did last half term. 7-B and 7-2, you're sending yours to Mr. Angia. 7-3 and 7-C, me again. And 7-D, you're sending yours to Mr. Firmage or Mr. Kilcoyne, whoever you sent it to last time. Okay, so just like last time, you only need to pick one task a week to do. So each Friday, well, by each Friday, it doesn't have to be on Friday, you need to have sent us one task. If you choose to do extra tasks, you will get extra positives on class charts. But if you feel you can only get one done in a week, please don't worry about doing more. So the difference between the grid this time and last time is we've ordered the tasks to make them a little clearer as to what you're doing. The task that's at the start, so next to week one, is the easiest task. It's more straightforward. It should be simpler as to what you do, but you're still getting lots of excellent knowledge. The task at the end will be more challenging. Now, that might be a more challenging resource to use. We might be asking you to think a bit deeper, but at the end of it, you should all come out with similar knowledge. It's just how you get there and the task you choose to engage with. Finally, I hope this presentation has been helpful. If you have any questions about any of the tasks, please refer to your class teacher again, the person you'll send your work to. All of the web links are on the document and they will be set on a Monday, due on a Friday, and that will be reset each week. There may be accompanying bits of work. So for task two, you can see it says there is a worksheet that will be uploaded on class charts as well. OK, I hope you are all excited to learn about development and to find out what is development and what does it look like across the world. Have a lovely week, Year 7, and I will see you next week.